Hi, my name is Todd Smith and I am one of the co-founders here at Joy Organics. I have the great opportunity of overseeing our partnership programs and one of the things I do is I record videos on this YouTube channel is not only do I select topics that I feel that would be beneficial to our partners, but I also take their ideas or take their requests and record videos. And one of the things that I have been having a lot of people ask about is how to build a wholesale business. And what this would be is this is where you're selling your own brand. Now obviously you can sell it uh, through your store, you could sell it online, but you can also set up other stores that would sell your products from them. And so that's what I'm gonna talk about here is the six steps to building a wholesale business. So step one is very simply to do the basics. Uh, what does that mean? That means you create a separate email address, for example, at Joy Organics, it's wholesale at joyorganics.com. Our support would be support at joyorganics.com. So you wanna create a dedicated email for your wholesale program. Um, I would recommend that if you don't have a phone number on your website, you put a phone number on your website. A lot of our private label partners don't have phone numbers on their websites, and these partners are losing sales. Every day, we're getting people calling into us, asking questions about the products, asking how much to take, asking about the difference in products, and many of these people are placing their orders right over the phone. So if you don't have a phone number on your website, you need to get one. Uh, you can buy a phone number online and then just have it forwarded into your cell phone number that you can answer when you're available. When you're not available, you could have it go into a voicemail. But for here at Joy Organics, a lot of our wholesale inquiries come by phone. I'd also recommend that you get clear on your ordering process. Uh, if you're just starting a wholesale business, it may be that if somebody wants to buy your products at wholesale, they just let you know what they want to buy and you'd work up an order for them and invoice them for that uh, product. And then again, we'll talk about how you would uh, determine pricing here. Uh, as, as you can see at Joy Organics, uh, we've got uh, very sophisticated systems in place. All of our wholesale partners um, receive special login information to a specific shopping cart uh, within Shopify where they can go in and select whatever products they want, uh, just check out their discount is applied and uh, we ship that order uh, in no later than two business days from the time it's placed. So again, you just want to get clear on your ordering process so if people ask you how it works, you know. Step two is to determine your wholesale pricing. So uh, number one, cash pricing. Cash pricing would be the same as credit card pricing. So this would be uh, somebody that's gonna buy your product, they're gonna pay by credit card, it may be a local business that pays by business check, so you would have pricing for that. And most uh, CBD brands in the marketplace, just like most jewelry brands or most clothing brands, offer a 50% discount uh, for people who are reselling that brand. And so uh, that's generally what I would recommend would be 50% off the retail price. You may also want to consider some net 30 day pricing. Uh, as an example, if in your town there's a, a health food store that you want to uh, offer your products to and that health food store only works with brands that give them 30 day terms, then you might want to give them 40% off retail or 45% off retail since you're not getting the cash up front. Um, you may also want to consider consigning your products. You may have uh, a store in the area that you think would be very successful selling your products, but because of COVID, that store owner is cash strapped and you can say, hey, how about I consign some products to you? Um, I'll give you some products to sell and then uh, based upon what you sell, then you would pay me X dollars amount. So you might, uh, again, give somebody uh, that is, you've consigned your products to 40% off retail where somebody who's paying you up front through credit card or check 50% off retail. And then you would want to establish your sample pricing. You know, when people reach out to us at Joy Organics and they're interested in our wholesale program, we just don't send them free product. We give them a coupon code that they can apply uh, to whatever products they want to buy and they get 50% off the retail pricing. So you'd want to think about how you're going to handle that. A lot of times people are going to say, can you send me free samples? We don't send free samples. Um, I mean, if it's Sprouts, which we're in, uh, a major store of some sort, we'll send them free samples, but not just somebody inquiring about our wholesale program. Now, step three is you may want to design a brochure. And the brochure doesn't need to be fancy. It could just very simply be a price list that has tinctures and a little you know, bottle of your tincture and the pricing. So it could just be a simple one page wholesale brochure. If you wanna see what ours looks like here at Joy Organics, uh, just reach out to us at wholesale at joyorganics.com, request a copy of our wholesale brochure and you can see what we've designed. Now here at Joy Organics, again, we've built a very credible brand in the marketplace, a top 10 brand and the number one premium brand. Many of our wholesale inquiries come from 
people who've used our products, love our products, and then they want to begin to be a wholesale partner selling our products. So many of our inquiries come from our existing customers. So that's one of the big benefits of advertising your wholesale program. If nothing else, I would definitely recommend that you build a wholesale web page on your website offering wholesale, even if you don't put together a price list or anything else. Look at Joy Organics. Uh, in the top navigation, it says partnerships. If you click on that, you can see a drop down where you can see private label, wholesale, blank bottle, uh, affiliate partnerships. So you would want to design a web page uh, that uh, would allow you to market your wholesale program. It's a great source of additional business for you. Step five would be to build a strong regional presence. Uh, the smartest thing you can do as a new CBD brand is to focus on building in your region. Rather than trying to compete nationally, focus on building your region, just like a franchise. You know, I guarantee you there was one Chick-fil-A store that opened up, just like one McDonald's, and then the next one opened up near that, and the next one opened up near that. They focus on building regionally, and then they focus on building nationally. Same kind of concept you would want to follow. So things that you want to consider doing is, is search engine optimization or SEO for your local market. Um, if you were to type in CBD wholesale, you're going to see, if you type that in Google, you're going to see local companies appear on that very first page because they, that Google can tell where your location is and it will serve up uh, those companies who offer CBD wholesale in your local area and then it shows them the ones that are ranked top nationally. So focus locally so that you're not competing against national companies. Secondly, if you want to build more awareness, consider setting up a booth at farmers markets, at festivals, so that the local community can see your brand. And you know, marketing is one of those things that the first time somebody hears about you or sees you, they're like, okay, great. But then they keep hearing about you, keep seeing you, and they're like, hey, I want to support this company. I mean, they're a local company, I'm a local company. You know, we're gonna support each other. And I mean, here in Colorado, it's crazy. Uh, the support that local businesses want to give other businesses. So again, uh, the more you're visible in your local community, the more that those companies that are interested in selling CBD will reach out to you. Health events uh, are also a great way to bring awareness. Little pop-up shops, great way to bring awareness. Local media, whether it's advertising in your city's uh, publication or reaching out to local media in your city uh, for media coverage. Um, you know, one of the things that I would recommend right now, especially if you're moving into the CBD space on a full-time level, is even consider opening a CBD store. Um, now, it's kind of weird for me to say opening a CBD store uh, because I have been against opening CBD stores right now during this COVID environment. But right now, I am seeing a lot of release signs. There's a lot of landlords that are starving for tenants. And so you could go in and negotiate uh, anything at this point with most landlords. And I would negotiate maybe a three month lease uh, with the ability to extend three months or a month to month lease. Something that gives you a physical location that uh, will allow you to show in, up in the local Google uh, search results. And you can just operate your business uh, right out of your store. So, but don't sign a three year lease or anything like that. Just look at a short-term lease right now would be my advice. Um, step six would then be to reach out to local businesses. Now, if you, you know, are a CBD company that's focused on golfers, then you would wanna reach out to all the pro shops in your area and the golf stores in your area. But let's just assume you're a traditional brand. Um, then, you know, here you would open up a lot of opportunities. Uh, you could target doctor's offices, rehab centers, chiropractors, uh, integrative medicine doctors, anti-aging specialists, uh, pain clinics. And even if these people decide not to carry your brand, if you make a positive impression on them, they'll refer people to you. I mean, our store here in Fort Collins, one of the main referral sources are the doctors in Fort Collins, the pain clinics in Fort Collins, the rehab centers in Fort Collins. So by making them aware of your brand, even if they decide not to carry it now, you'll be amazed with the business that they can refer to you. Other businesses that you could reach out to locally would be spas, salons, apothecaries, gift shops, uh, independent pharmacies, not the national pharmacies, but the independent pharmacies, just like the independent health food stores. Uh, you could also reach out to CBD stores that might be in your local community, pet stores, uh, vape shops, head shops, uh, golf shops, uh, dispensaries. Uh, you know, it really boils down to just being creative. Uh, I have a video on this channel that's titled Four Ways to Build a CBD Business. And um, you know, if you were to make a list of a thousand different ways you could build your business, they would all fall down line of these four. 
how to acquire new customers, uh, increasing order size, increasing order frequency, increasing customer loyalty. And so one of the things, if you watch that video, is there's a lot of great ideas on how to acquire new customers, how to increase ordering frequency, order you know, size, and loyalty. But one of the things I do on that video is I challenge people to think of 25 creative ways. And so my challenge to you would be to say, okay, what are 25 different kinds of businesses in my region that would be great businesses to sell CBD to? And then again, you could reach out to those businesses offering your products at wholesale and build a wholesale clientele that's marketing products in your region. So anyhow, these are just some ideas on how to build a wholesale business uh, to hopefully get you started. And then if you're creative, uh, you'll think of a lot more ideas than I've shared here on this video.